and joining us right now on the Folsom Lake Honda hotline. Folsom Lake Honda, your one-stop Honda shop. Needs no introduction. You know him. You love him. King's legend on a number of different fronts. Jerry Reynolds, our guest. Jerry, how are you this afternoon, sir? Well, just great being with Whitey, Rami, and now Jerry. Whitey, Rami, and Jerry. What yes. do you think? I, I like, it has a ring to it. It has a ring to it. Maybe I should join the podcast that you guys do together. <laughs> well, I, I, I think that probably it definitely would improve things. But, uh... <laughs> well, I appreciate that, Jerry. Let's let's start things off with the Kings. I do I do want to look around the rest of the NBA with you, but not now the season in the books, obviously. A good one, one that exceeded most people's expectations around this basketball team. But now it's about building on that. Where do you think the the greatest opportunity for growth and improvement is for this Kings team this offseason? Well, I I have said that I feel that they really need another power player, you know, a guy who can play power forward as well as center, backup center, and and fit with uh, Domas, you know. And I, I mean, I think it. It's easy to say and hard to find, but there's some maybe some guys out there they could go after, and and uh, I, I think that's the real need. I mean, you can always use more good shooting and 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 then maybe a, a wing defender type thing, but I I think the biggest need really is that that you know a, a big tough strong guy, you know, kind of a Bobby Portis type, but you're not going to get him uh, since he's under long-term contract, but somebody like that that can play center effectively and can stretch the floor as a four. Um, you're um, almost sounds to me, coach, like you're talking about somebody like, I don't know, Naz Reed, somebody like that. Is that- you know, that <laughs> might be it. I, uh, I've, uh, you know, I, I've really enjoyed watching that guy play uh, the last year or so. I mean, he's just getting better and better with his deep shot. He plays, you know, I don't know enough about him personally, and I'm sure the, the Kings front office has a lot more information. So, you know, whether he's a, a great teammate or coachable and all that stuff, you'd want to know. But I think as a just the talent that he has and that he's young uh, would seem to be an awfully good fit to me. Jerry, I wanted to ask you um, how how you think uh, Vazenkov might fit, and I know I have suggested it. Hey, maybe maybe if he's uh, uh, agreeable to it, maybe you could move him to get an asset that would help you. And a lot of Kings fans don't like they don't like me mentioning that at all. They're already very protective of this guy. But from what you've seen of Vazenkov, how do you think he's going to potentially fit into a, the way Mike Brown puts things together? Well, he. He's- he certainly looks like a terrific shooter. So, so I know with Mike Brown, very creative coach, I think he could find a find minutes for him and, uh, you know, can utilize him. I, I, I certainly would think that I, I don't know that he solves some of the problems that need to be solved. Like we're talking about, I, I'm not sure, you know, what he's going to do defensively to improve the team or, or really protect the rim, you know, might create some actual other problems that way. But I, I would tend to agree with you. I mean, the way I look at it, he's, he's an asset. I mean, to you or to someone else, one thing about him, he, uh, there's enough teams in the league have seen him and like him. So if, if he could help you bring something that, uh, is as good or better at, at, at a, at a better fit, mm-hmm. I don't know why you wouldn't do that. I mean, that's how you get better. Uh, and that's what they, they, you know, you want for this team. And it's kind of like with the draft pick. If you can use the draft pick along with something else to, to get you the player you need, uh, you've got a probably a two or three year window. You can't count on five years or you'd like to, but, but I mean, uh, so, so anyway, I, I guess that's my feeling is that the guy is clearly an asset. He has value to the Kings and he has value to the league. And, and that's, that's a real bonus uh, as far as trying to re, uh, build your team even better. Talking with Jerry Reynolds, Kings legend here on the Cattles and Rami show, looking around the, the rest of the NBA playoffs. And I, and, and I think a lot of other folks, Jerry thought, Man, the the Western Conference is wide open, and maybe even maybe even thoughts uh, of the Kings making it through the West were, were dancing through a few folks' heads before they ran into the Golden State Warriors. The deeper we go, though, and the more I see of Nikola Jokic and this Denver Nuggets team, they are the the class of this conference. And and we were all I don't know about you, Jerry, probably probably not to the extent I was. You know the sport much better, but I think we all 
we're underestimating them or, or missing the boat a little bit on just how good these nuggets are. Well, I was too, by the way, uh, <laughs> you know, I was too. And I, I didn't realize Jamal Murray had uh, really progressed back to, you know, or better than even before the injury. So that surprised me. And then of course, I think, uh, you know, the bench and how Coach Malone utilized them, it's certainly they've been more productive than I anticipated. But yeah, I, I underestimated them. And, uh, but I'm, I'm with you too, is that, yeah, you know, they're, they're going to be a, a, the team to beat now for, for quite a while. And uh, as long as Joker's standing up on both legs, uh, they will be. So, but the rest of the, the West isn't scary in my mind. I mean, if I were, you know, with the, this uh, Kings team, they, you know, they're, they're close to, yeah. to everybody else. That's for sure. Um, Jer, what to your eye did Boston do better in game four against the heat? And do you think that Boston, you know, no one's ever come back from down three games. Does Boston have a, a shot still at, at winning this series? I would say if they win tonight, they, they might, uh, I mean, I wouldn't count on nobody ever has, but mm-hmm. then again, you know, nobody had in baseball until the Red Sox right. beat the Yankees, you know. So it, there's always the first. And I do think that the, the Celtics are a more talented team. They haven't played like it. Uh, but, you know, as as to what they did better, I thought, uh, they, they just didn't let the ball stick so much. I mean, instead of kind of taking turns with Tatum and Brown, I mean, and to their credit, I thought they moved the ball better. And, you know, you got to – got a lot more people involved in the offense. And, and I think when Al Horford and, and, and Will Grant Williams can make some shots and, and, and all that, I mean, it really makes them a better team. Jerry Reynolds, our guest for a few more minutes here on Cattles and Rami on the Folsom Lake Honda hotline. You, you mentioned, and, and, and it was another thing I, I, I realized as I was watching these playoffs that not only are the nuggets good now, they're going to be a problem for a while. When you look at the age of that core that they have there. The flip side of that coin though, LeBron may not be something to worry about for very much longer. What did you make of his comments and saying he has a lot to think about when it comes to his future and and the game of basketball after they were eliminated? Yeah, I'm guessing Jerry, you probably haven't slept a wink since you heard that LeBron <laughs> might be retiring, right? I've just been a tizzy since then, you know. And, uh, uh, I was kind of hoping maybe everybody on the Lakers would contemplate retiring, you know, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but probably no such luck, but, uh, you know, I think they just caught LeBron at a, you know, tough moment, obviously, uh, you know, father time eventually will win, but uh, father time hasn't, uh, take, taken too much damage on him. I, I agree with kind of what he said. He's better. He said, I'm better than 90% of the leagues, if not 95 players in the league. And absolutely is, you know, he, he's not the number one guy anymore, but he's probably in the top 10 still. And, uh, I'd be surprised if he doesn't, I'd be very surprised. I think he was just pretty uh, depressed at the moment kind of thing, getting swept. And, but he had a, didn't look like an old man out there to me too much. It may be tired in the second half a little, but, but, uh, yeah, I, anyway, I don't take it at face value. I, I suspect it's kind of like Tom Brady. He'd, he, even if he retired, he'd come back about the first month. <laughs> hey, hey, Jer, before we let you go, I believe it was yesterday on our, our pod, Old Fashioned 3, you and Phantom were talking about how something needs to be done about flopping. So I guess somebody at the league office listened. How do you feel about uh, uh, the league now apparently deciding that they might start throwing uh, tees at guys and, and uh, sending the other team to the foul line if, uh, if uh, players are flopping? Well, I'd, I'd like to see them do something about it, but I'm not sure that they'll do the right thing. I'm afraid it's going to get into one of those things. They got to go to the yeah. videotape or, you know, or monitors and uh-huh. they'll spend two minutes deciding if it's a flop or not. And, uh, I'm, I'm just, so I guess, I guess what I'm saying is I'm, I'm not optimistic. It's going to be handled properly any more than they decided they were going to really clean up the interrupted dribble, yeah. you know, which is everybody actually, everybody that dribbles anymore interrupts their dribble <laughs> to get somewhere. So, uh, no, I, I don't know. I don't know what you do. I mean, it's, to me, it's, it's kind of like, uh, the three point shooters, you know, 
to me, you can't even guard them. And, and it's like, until the referees kind of clean that up to where, you know, if you brush somebody as you run by, I, I don't know that that deserves three free throws and, uh, or hit their trunks. And, and it was flopping like that. It's like, well, yeah, if, if uh, Joel Embiid bumps into you, you know, it might look like a flop, but it also might be you got the crap knocked out. Of you. <laughs> Impossible, yeah. I mean, they always used to talk about Vladi, and yes, he flopped. But I mean, against Shaq, I don't think those were flops. They were getting, he was getting knocked goofy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's Jerry Reynolds, the Kings legend, on a number of different fronts, and our guest for the last few minutes here on Cattles and Rami. Always appreciate the time, Jerry. I'm sure we'll talk again soon, sir. Hey, Jerry. Well, hope so. Take care, guys. Have Take a care. good one. And uh, give a plug to the to the podcast. Oh, Old Fashioned it, Three interested. podcast. We have a new, another episode dropping uh, tomorrow. It's Jerry Reynolds and myself and The Phantom. Nice. So folks yeah. can check that Thank out you. wherever they get podcasts. My pleasure. Coming up on the other side, who's to blame? We point fingers here on the Cattles and Rami Show. Cattles and Rami.